Probably uh, the last kind of three years, I really wanted to find a way to bring uh, 3 to the web. Um, and the web really wasn't ready for it um, until fairly recently. So in the last year, Mozilla was able to bring a number of browser vendors, uh, oh, thank you, was able to bring a number of browser vendors to the table to start creating the standard called WebGL. And we made some tremendous progress uh, over that time. So I want to show you kind of some of the things that you can do with it. Um, one of the first things that people tend to think of when they think of 3D on the web is the games. And that is certainly one of the, the main use cases. So here's the start of a simple little platformer. Uh, this was created by a gentleman named Paul Brunt, who is working on a library called uh, GLGE. Uh, this is kind of one of many WebGL libraries that are starting to come out there to really make uh, doing this kind of stuff easy and accessible to web developers. Uh, 3D development is not easy. It's significantly more complex than kind of the 2D camera stuff that folks are doing. Um, but with the help of, uh, of these libraries, you can really do stuff like this uh, fairly easily and in a fairly straightforward fashion. But uh, 3D on the web is not really just about games. There's a lot of things that you can do once you have access uh, to kind of the raw graphics power that uh, the 3D hardware can provide. So this is uh, one of the examples that I really like. Uh, this is a technique called polynomial texture maps. Uh, and what this allows you to do is uh, you can take photographs of a physical object uh, under a variety of conditions, but instead of it being just a static photograph uh, like you would normally have, for example, on Flickr, you can instead uh, dynamically change the lighting of this photograph kind of in real time. Ooh. So in a normal photograph, you might, for example, have a head-on photo taken like this, where you know, with the flash blurring in. But it doesn't really show you a lot of the fine depth and detail that you might see, you know, if the light is from uh, up top, or you know, maybe the more menacing look if the light is coming from the bottom. But you can do all this kind of stuff in real time again if you have access to that uh, that graphic compute power. So another example of what you can do uh, with WebGL, again not game related. Uh, this is a tool, a uh, fairly simple tool that was built by Queen's University by the BioMotion Lab. There, uh, they have a lot of data on the human gait, basically the human walk. Uh, before WebGL, I, I don't think they really had a good way to get this data out there for regular people to use. They could have created a movie of this, but it's really not kind of the same interactive experience. And so what this tool allows you to do is it allows you to take all the kind of emotional and the physiological uh, sliders that they have and modify this gate. So I can have you know, a very sad skeleton here, very, very heavy, very uh, or I can have an extremely bouncy, happy skeleton. <laughs> Nervous, he's going to move a little fast, and then there's kind of the very odd state of sad and relaxed, and I'm not really sure. <laughs> so, but again, kind of a good example of something that's not a game, but something that really was not possible to put on the web uh, before WebGL. It's, it's really just a bunch of numeric data that, even just on a raw CPU, you couldn't really crunch it fast enough. And so, but with kind of the, the graphic power, you can do it. Um, you probably remember uh, this little guy uh, from earlier uh, when you saw it in Stuart's demo on mobile. Uh, one of the important uh, pieces of WebGL is we wanted to make sure that it can run on both desktop and mobile. This is the exact same code that's running on both platforms. And so it's really making sure that the web still remains uh, kind of the one web. I wish this guy wasn't wearing a Firefox shirt because my first thought here is the one that you will kill it with fire or something. But uh, <laughs> he's got the Firefox logo on there, so I, I, guess, I guess he can survive. Um, it, WebGL is really, uh, it, it's kind of a future-looking technology. I mean, we're starting to, to see it out there now, and we hope to ship it with Firefox 4, um, but there are definitely applications uh, that can take advantage of it today. Uh, so one thing that really kind of drove this home for me was uh, last week uh, I saw a tweet that said, hey, if you go to one of the Google Street View API examples, it seems they're using WebGL. And I didn't really believe that at first, but it turns out that uh, if you use the Google API and you have a WebGL enabled browser, uh, Street View is actually all done with WebGL. Cool. So this is entirely WebGL, no flash, no plugins at all. Involved. Now, I have no way to prove that to you because the only way that I can do that is by saying that there's no right click menu for the flash thing. But you know, I mean, you can check this out yourself. And yeah, all these demos actually you can check out yourself. All this stuff works in uh, any of the latest uh, minefield libraries. So you can definitely play with, with a bunch of this stuff. So, 
WebGL it really doesn't exist kind of uh, in a vacuum. There's a lot of things that really made it possible. Uh, and it's really a lot of the work that's been done by many of you that are here today. Uh, things like uh, JavaScript performance were extremely instrumental in making the kinds of things that, that you see here. And that you saw earlier, for example, the opening visualization from Mozilla Japan and a lot of the work that Dave and Francine have been doing. Um, all have really been made possible by not just WebGL, uh, but also by a lot of, kind of the browser improvements. It's important to remember that a lot of this stuff, this is stuff that Flash and Silverlight can't do. This is a way that uh, the web platform is really moving beyond a lot of the closed proprietary platforms. And I think we'll see a lot more of this kind of as people uh, get a feel for kind of what the web is actually capable of. Um, it's also important to remember that with WebGL, this is an area that Mozilla has led. We were able to bring many of the other browser vendors to the table to create this standard, even in light of uh, other potentially competing standards. Uh, WebGL is the one that kind of came out and everybody rallied around. And as a result, we now have implementations of WebGL, not just in Firefox, uh, but also in WebKit, Chrome, and soon in Opera. So this is not really just a, a Firefox standard, but it is one that we've been able to drive adoption into the other browsers as well. So I'm really looking forward to see what you guys and what uh, folks in the web can do with WebGL. And I think uh, if you want to learn more, uh, we'll be doing a little science fair breakout session. You can find uh, me or some of the others who are working on this. Um, otherwise, thank you very much.